Hello everyone. In this video, I am going to talk about some application in linear model. Okay. So for the application problem now, let's take a look at some examples. First, Emily saved up thirteen five thousand for her her summer visit to Seattle. She anticipates spending four hundred each week on rent. Food and fun. Find, interpret, find and interpret the horizontal intercept and determine the reasonable domain and the range for this function. So in this problem, there are two changing quantity, the time and the money. The amount of money that she has remaining while on vacation depends on how long she stay. So we can define our variables, including the unit, so, such as the output is going to be M, the money remaining in dollars. And the input should be the time. Since he, she's counting that Hey, she's going to spend in four hundred dollars each week, so that means the time, the unit of the time should be in weeks. Okay, so reading the problem, we can identify two important value. The first is the thirteen five hundred. That's the initial value for the total amount of money. The other value appears to be the rate of change. So that means the units of dollar per week matches the unit of our output variable divided by our input variable. That means the initial value that she have is, sorry, 13,500. And then each week she's spending $400. So that means the rate is going to be a negative $400 per week, right? So, okay, so what would be the function? Well, you can write the function as the remaining money equals to 13,500 minus 400 times the time, which is in weeks. All right, so now we have our function, our equation. So they ask you the first, find the intercept, the horizontal intercept, well, I assume the first intercept they want to ask is the vertical intercept. The vertical intercept would be the initial value, right? So no doubt that the vertical intercept would be when t equals to 0, b equals to 13,500 is given. So now for horizontal intercept. Horizontal intercept is when y equals to 0. So we have that equals to zero and then we solve for t t is going to equals to a 75 i believe that you can pause the video and calculate it by yourself so what does that mean so we know that the horizontal intercept is 8.75 so since this is represent the input value where the output value is going to be zero that means to interpret this, we could say, hey, Emily will have no money left after 8.75 weeks. Okay, so now what would be the domain? So the domain, remember, is going to represent the set of input value. So what would be the reasonable one? Since after eight weeks, 8.75 weeks, she's going to run out of money. And then when you're counting the time, it has to be a positive number. So for the domain, it should be a reasonable one should be from zero to the time to 8.75, right? And range, represent the set of output value. So the reasonable range for that would be what? So remember, our output is the remaining that she's remaining, 
the money that she's remaining. So that means should be zero to thirteen five hundred, which is her saved up. Okay, so now let's try another one. So here's a second question. Um a database manager is loading a large table from the backups. Getting impatient, she noticed that 1.2 million rows had been loaded. 10 minutes later, 2.5 million rows had been loaded. How much longer will she have to wait for another 80 million rows to load it? Okay, so what will be the initial value? So at the beginning, they told you that, all right, so she noticed that 1.2 million row has been loaded. So that means when she noticed that, we can let, hey, the time input is going to be the time t. The output would be the table that she's, the database that she's trying to back up. So let's say the row. Um, the database, I should say the data. Let's just use D. So the time should be in minutes. And then the data should be in rows. Here instead counting by rows. All right, so the initial is she, when the time is zero, 1.2 million rows is rolled. I should say the time should be in millions rows. That should be the unit for the data. And then after 10 minutes, another data set would be after 10 minutes, there is 2.5 million, 2.5 million rows had been loaded. So given these two order pair, how much longer will she have to wait for all 880 million rows to be loaded. So that means they're giving you two points and want you to find the equation and they calculate when y equals to 80, what will be the input? Okay, so first is we need to find the slope because we already, they already given you the y-intercept or the b, which is your initial value, 1.2. All right. So the slope is going to be the changing in y over the changing in x. So the changing in y would be 2.5 minus 1.2 over 10 minus 0. So I have 1.3 over 10, so which is 0 0.013. Okay, after we found m, and we also have b, so our equation is going to be D, our data equals to 1.0, I'm sorry, 0, 0.13 times the time plus 1.2. Since the total data that she needs to be loaded is 80 million, so that means when D equals to 80, we need to find our time. So the time should equals to, we should set the equation like that, and the final the time, which is when you calculate that is approximately equals six hundred and six minutes. So that means she needs she wait six hundred and six minutes to load all of the data. So another type of a linear application problem would be this type. Jamal is choosing between two moving companies. The first is U-Haul charges an upfront fee of $20, then $0.59 cents a mile. The second, Budget, charges an upfront fee of $16, then $0.63 cents a mile. When will be U-Haul be better choice for Jamal? Okay, so now that means we need to set up two equations. One is for U-Haul, the other one is from Budget. So. From U-Haul, we know that, let's say, let fx function represent the total cost of U-Haul and, sorry, g of function, g of x function represent 
the total cost of budget. Okay, so now let's write down the function. So for U-Haul, you have a fixed cost, which is your initial cost is going to be $20, right? And after that, you will have a variable cost, which is $0.59 cents a mile. So let's say S represent the distance in miles. So the function, the total cost function for U-Haul should be $20 plus the variable cost, which is $0.59 cents per mile, whereas budget is going to be fixed cost $16 plus the variable cost is $0.63 cents per mile. All right, so now they ask you, when will U-Haul be a better choice for your mom? So if U-Haul is better choice, that means U-Haul, the total cost to rent a U-Haul is going to be cheaper than the total cost of a budget. So that means I want the output of U-Haul less than the output of budget. That makes it a better choice for Jamal. All right, so FS, we substitute that in here. We have a function like that. And then let's solve for x. We subtract 16 on both sides. We got 4. We also subtract 0.96x on both sides. So we have 4 less than 0.004x. And then we divide the 0.004 on both sides. So we have when x. So that means when x greater than 100, what does that mean? That means if Jamal's moving distance is more than 100 miles, that means it's better for him to choose U-Haul rather than budget. I think this is really application because when you decide, hey, what cell phone plan, data plan that you want to use, then you can estimate, hey, how much data you're going to use because sometimes some company some carrier they will have a cheaper flat rate but higher per user's rate, right? You can compare these two. Okay, so now let's take a look at another example. We can use a linear function to do a prediction. So a town's population has been growing linearly. In 2004, the population was 16200. By 2009, the population had grown to 8100. If the chain, if this chain continues, predict the population in 2013. So they're giving you two data points, right? One is in 2004, the population is 16,200. And then in 2009, the population is 8,100. Okay, given these two, we can find the equation for this population trend growing in the town. Okay, first step is we need to find the slope, right? Slope is equal to the changing in x, changing in y over the changing in x. Okay, that would be the slope. That means the growing rate is going to be 380 people per year. Okay, since we already know the and then um since we already know the slope, we also need to find B. How do we find B if you know in two points? Well, in that case it would be you need to have an equation y equals to 318 times x plus b. You can substitute any number into the equation. Well, I have 16200 380x, oh, not x, times 2004 plus b. So when you solve it, you will have b equals to, b is equal to negative 75,000, oh, negative, seven, <laughs> negative 755,320. So your equation is going to be y equals to 
3, 18 times x minus this number. So there is another way to do it. The other way to do it is we consider 2004 is the initial year. So that means this is going to be 0. Instead, 2009. From 2004, let's say 2004 is when we're starting recording the population. And then by 2009, how many years pass? Totally 5 years. So that means your x coordinate is going to be 0 to 5. And then y coordinate should be your population grow from 16200 to 18100. So if that's the case, your linear question function should be y equals to 318. Should be the same because the difference is still 5, right? The underneath difference is still 5. x plus the initial value, which is 6200. All right, either way to do that, you can still solve the problem, trying to predict what happened in 2013. So in 2013, if we use our first equation, that means I need to substitute 2013 into the function. So your output is going to be calculated by yourself. You will have... Um, 9,000 and 9,620. So in here, it will be the same. But remember that your time starting from 2004. So now think about it. From 2004 to 2013, how many years passes? So you totally passes nine years. So that means instead of substitute 2013, you need to substitute nine into the equation plus 6200 so you will end up to have the same answer so either way it just you need to be careful when you do the substitution okay so the second problem is when will the population reach 15,000 so it's the same you can either use the first equation or the second equation they should give you the same answer now I'm going to use the second equation so when the population is a hundred is it a hundred and fifty thousand so I substitute here when I solve for x should be twenty three point one fifty eight approximately remember this is time that since two thousand four so that means if we round it um so our model can predict the population will reach 15,000 in a little bit more than 23 years after 2004, which is near in the year 2027, the population, oh, I'm sorry, I write this wrong, this should be 15,000. The population reaches 15,000. will look like this one. Anna and the Emil starts and at the same intersection. Anna works is at four miles per hour, while Emil works south at three miles per hour. They're communicating with a two-way radio with a range of two miles. How long after they start walking will they fall out of radio contact? All right. This may look very complicated, but once you draw a map to help you to understand the problem, it's not that hard. So look, Anna and Emil, they're starting at same point, whereas Anna works towards the east with four miles Per hour and Emil works to the south with the speed of two miles or three miles per hour and the dead distance should be this line right so look at what is that that is a triangle when it comes to triangle how do you calculate the distance between the red should, we should use Pythagorean theorem, which is 
the a squared plus b squared equals to c squared. So, okay, so b squared, <coughs> b represent what? The distance that Anna has been walking, right? So, the distance, I know that Anna is walking 4 miles per hour, so the total distance that she walks should be 4 times the time that she walks. So does Emil. So the, time, the total distance that Emil walks should be 3 times t. So that means by Pythagorean theorem, we have 40 squared plus 3t squared. This should equals to the distance. And we want the distance in here should be within, I don't know, let's say c squared. And the c squared should be what? The distance in here. And the radial communication can only with the the radio is within a range of two mile, so that means our c should equal to two. Okay, so now let's calculate the t. So I have sixteen t squared plus nine t squared equals to four, and then my twenty four t squared equals to four. So t squared equals to four over twenty five divided by twenty five on both sides. And now we take square root on both sides. When you simplify it, you should have positive or negative five, 2 over 5. However, since this is the time, so that means times you can have a negative. So we drop the negative. So we know that, hey, they will fall out of radio contact in 0.4 hours or 24 minutes. So that's it for today's lecture. So for this application problem, the first thing you need to do is to clear and to identify what is the changing quantity and then careful, carefully and clearly define which variable represent these quantities, such as you need to know hey, what is going to be your input and what will be your output. After that, you set up the equation, or sometimes it will help if you can draw a map to understand the problem. And then the next step should be you solving the problem as needed. And then after that, you need to clearly convey your results using appropriate unit and answer these in a full sentences. Okay, so that's it. Let me know if you have other questions.